Every tractor has built-in hydraulics, and that means that if you're adding some add-on equipment, say a front-end loader, maybe a backhoe or a snowplow, you can tap into those hydraulics on the tractor and through that control that add-on equipment. In this video, we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of the hydraulic components that you need to add if you are adding a front end loader onto your tractor and need to control that through the hydraulics. The components needed for controlling a front end loader are going to be different a little bit depending on if the tractor has a cab or not. This is typically what is going to be used if the tractor does not have a cab. Um, that's also called an open station tractor. You have a joystick and then the joystick is directly attached to the control valve. For a tractor that has a cab, there's more items involved. Typically you're going to have a joystick which is mounted inside the cab and then you'll have the control valve which is going to be mounted outside the cab. Usually it's mounted under the front right part of the cab but it can be mounted anywhere um, on the tractor. It could be on the frame of the tractor or even sometimes it's mounted on the rear of the tractor. And then connecting the joystick to the valve, you're going to have either cables or a wiring harness, or in some cases, you're going to have both. In the setup we're going to talk about today, there's going to be both cables and a wiring harness. Now let's talk about the individual components. For the joystick, anytime the operator is moving the joystick, the loader or the bucket are going to be moving. How that's working is the joystick is moving internal components on the valve, which then allow oil to flow in different directions. And that oil, when it flows in the different directions, is what's causing the loader or the bucket to move. I'm going to take the rubber boot off here. And then um, you can see here when I move this joystick, that spool moves in. When I move the joystick up, the spool moves out. And then when I move the joystick from side to side, the spool moves out and in. Every time the spool is moving, it's allowing oil to flow in a different direction inside the valve. And then that oil is flowing to the loader or the bucket and causing movement. The same principle is true with the setup on a tractor with a cab, but again, because there's more components, it's just a little bit more complicated with how the movement of the joystick results in movement of the loader. So just to explain that, you have a joystick which moves in multiple directions. Joystick then is attached to the valve. We're gonna talk about the cables first. Um, via the cables. You can see here that the inner cable moves. So this is the end that's attached to the joystick. And when the joystick moves, it's basically pushing this cable in and out. And this cable tip is attached to the control valve where the spools are with cable connection hardware, which holds it in place. And anytime the cable is moving, these spools are moving in and out and directing oil flow. There's also a wiring harness with this setup that's going to be connected from the joystick to the valve. The wiring harness is communicating just with this section of the valve, which is electric, um, via the buttons. So that's not related to movement of the joystick, it's just whether the buttons are pressed. And the pressing of the buttons sends an electrical signal, which then is moving the spool um, in and out, which then directs oil flow. Um, in this setup, typically you've got these two controlling the loader and bucket, and then this one is controlling the grapple, opening and closing the grapple. Now we're going to talk about the control valve itself. There's going to be elements in any control valve you're working with when you're adding it to a tractor that are going to be the same. Um, the specifics won't be the same, but the general principle will be. So any control valve you're working with is going to have what's called working ports 
on this valve, it's going to be these four ports right here. Um, now what we're looking at is actually a cap in the port. The caps are always on there to keep things clean inside. You never want to introduce dirt or dust um, inside a valve, which can cause problems with the hydraulic system on your tractor. But these ports are working ports and they're controlling the loader and the bucket. And the way that they're doing that is there's gonna be four hoses connected to these ports and those hoses are running to the loader and the bucket. The number of working ports, of course, will be different depending on the valve you're working with. If you have a backhoe, you're going to have more ports simply because there's more movements that a backhoe makes. Every valve also that you're working with is always going to have a pressure and a return port. On this valve, this is the pressure. Notice there's a P for pressure. And then this one, there's a T for tank. And sometimes the return port is called the tank port. And that's that one. So what's happening with these ports is there's a hose attached here, which is connected to the tractor's hydraulic system where the oil is flowing into the valve. And then there's another hose here going back to the tractor where the oil is flowing out of the valve. And so any valve in order to work does need to have oil able to flow through it. And that's why you'll always have a pressure and a return port. Again, those can be in different locations on the valve, but they will always be there. Now, one thing to be aware of is the way that you attach to the tractor's pressure and return on the tractor itself. That's going to be different for almost every single tractor model. So that's typically the most tricky part anytime you're installing an external control valve onto a tractor to control add-on equipment. Uh, we have another video that discusses that in more depth. We don't go into that in detail in this video. I'm just going to quickly show an example of a port as well. This is a different port, which we'll discuss in a little bit. But just so you can see, this is what's called a female port. Um, it has threads on the inside, and that is how the hose, the hose is actually connected to the port with threads. This is the one port that is going to be, may or may not be present or may be different um, on, depending on the valve that you're working with and the tractor. Every tractor has one of three hydraulic setups. You're gonna have either open center, closed center, or load sense. And in this video, we're not getting into what the difference is between those, that's in another video. This particular valve is designed for to work with either open center or closed center tractors. Um, valves are always going to, they always have to match the hydraulic setup of the tractor. Um, so in this case, with this port, if you have an open center um, tractor, you're going to put a plug in this port and by plug I mean a hydraulic plug which is um, a threaded um, section with a cap and then that just threads directly in there so that would be for open center for closed center you would have what's called a sleeve and then that's going to be installed in that port and then the sleeve has a cap on it so that would go with a closed center tractor this valve is set up to work with either load sense tractors or closed center tractors. Again, you're going to have the working ports. There's six in this case because you've got the ports to control the loader, the bucket, and the grapple. And there's two ports for each function. These four are controlling the loader and the bucket. And then these two are controlling the grapple. With this one, there's going to be of course, your pressure and your return port. As we talked about, there's always a pressure and a return port, regardless of the hydraulic setup of the tractor. So this port is going to be pressure. So that has a hose connected to it with oil coming into the valve. That's coming from the tractor's hydraulics. This is the return port that has a hose connected to it, carrying the oil out of the valve back to the tractor's hydraulics. And then this is the port that's going to be unique um, based on the type of hydraulic setup the valve is designed for. So this valve is designed for closed center or load sense. Um, so if you have a load sense tractor, you would have another hose coming from the tractor's hydraulics and that would be attached to this port and that would be called the load sense line. If you have a closed center tractor, there would be a plug in this port. This video covered 
the fundamentals of what it takes to hydraulically control a front end loader that's being put on a tractor that may have never had a front end loader before. The main components are the joystick, the control valve, and then the way that the joystick is connected to the control valve, and also the way that the oil is flowing to and from the tractor and to and from the front end loader. And the same principles are going to apply with a front end loader as well as any type of add-on equipment that's hydraulically controlled on a tractor, maybe a snow plow or a backhoe um, or anything else that you're adding to the tractor and want to control with hydraulics. Thank <laughs> you.